Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vorce. Hopefully, every Catholic worth his or her weight in salt can see it quite plainly. It's crystal clear, except of course to the willfully blind. There is a philosophical approach to evangelization by many in the Catholic Church these days that is doomed to fail. The philosophical error is simple. Never confront, never offend, never say it like it is, and at all costs be as Protestant as you can be, as welcoming and accepting of a heretical set of beliefs as possible, so you can bring as many people into the church as possible. That entire philosophy is wrong. And lest the Church of Nice need yet another further reminder, Protestantism is a heresy. Protestantism denies the real presence of our blessed Lord in the Eucharist. It denies papal infallibility. It denies the authority of the church. It denies practically every teaching about the mother of God. It denies almost all of the sacraments, depending, of course, on which one of the 40,000 different Protestant groups you might be speaking of. It distorts the sacred scriptures. It tortures the true understanding of justification and salvation. It denies any essential communion with the saints. Shall we go on further? Heresy. Now, this isn't to condemn individual Protestants themselves. Many are simply born into a 500-year-old legacy of heresy while not necessarily being heretics themselves. But they are in a deficient position when it comes to salvation, and that needs to be said clearly. Once again, they are in a deficient position when it comes to salvation. The point of this is to condemn the actions of Catholic leaders who allow those drowning in heresy, our brothers and sisters in Christ through baptism, drowning in their heresy and their false beliefs, to continue in that miserable state. Leaders like Cardinal Donardo of Houston, who last year opened up his cathedral for the ordination ceremony of women priests right there in a Catholic cathedral sanctuary. Those women priests then went out to preach against Catholic truth in a host of ways. And then there are other leaders like Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston, who jumped up to another female Protestant minister and got his anointing at an ecumenical service. That picture of her, imagine this, pretending to be a priest draped in the stole of the priesthood, that picture sent not a few shockwaves around Catholic circles and also shocked the female minister herself, who later admitted to a secular paper she couldn't believe what had happened. Well, at least we can all agree there. But th those are just two examples, two high-profile examples, because we're talking, of course, about cardinals, of things that happen on the ground every day in the church because of errant theology, rotten formation, and an appalling overall lack of any prudential judgment not to mention the virtual lack of any supernatural faith. Do these leaders, from cardinals on down, really think that they don't create scandal with such photo ops or public statements? Heck, Cardinal DiNardo had to have the Blessed Sacrament removed from his own cathedral before the heretical so-called ordination ceremony could commence. If you're a prince of the church and you have to have Jesus escorted out of your own church building, before a ceremony takes place celebrating another religion, wouldn't you think the idea would occur to you that, hmm, maybe I shouldn't allow the ceremony in the first place? And then Cardinal O'Malley's exceedingly poor decision to appear to be equals with this minister. Note to the world, they aren't equals. Not because the man, Sean O'Malley, is intrinsically superior to the woman, Ann Robertson, the Protestant minister, but because his office is. To publicly blur the line between his office of bishop and her job as a hired minister of a heretical sect is beyond words to defend. And this seems to be the continual thread in these abuses of clerical positions. Too many of them act as though the ordained status belongs to them and they can do whatever they like. It does not belong to them. They do not own it. It isn't theirs. It is a gift to the church from God, from the groom to his bride for the good of his bride. This places a responsibility on them to act accordingly, not treat it as their own personal commodity. There's a certain dignity with which they must present what has been entrusted to them. 
And that dignity certainly does not include pandering to heretical systems to make friends with their adherents. Want to be friendly and open up a dialogue with these folks? Well, then do it in private and talk to them about the glory of the faith and how they should convert to it. How can we never hear a word about convert to the one true faith? Do you not believe it yourselves? You are successors of the apostles. Do you really think that Peter or Paul or James or John would be equating the great dignity of their offices with, oh, say, the Pharisees or other false religionists? They understood that their office was given to them as gift, not pride. Judas viewed his office as pride, not gift. Bottom line, when are we finally going to see an end to this constant pandering and false ecumenism and inauthentic sham presentations of the faith and instead see its actual beauty displayed and celebrated? At the very least, it's a bad form to portray the faith on equal footing to false religions. And who can believe that that is not exactly the message that many who hear about these things think and see when they encounter them? Of course it is. This is the age of great indifferentism. You know, all religions are the same. We need to come together as one, coexist, all roads lead to God, blah, blah, blah. These events feed that horrible evil of indifferentism and they keep it alive. How many untrained, poorly formed individuals saw that picture of a Protestant woman dressed as a priest anointing a Catholic bishop and didn't conclude, Oh, isn't that nice? See, all religions are basically the same. I'm glad they're all coming together. And for you Church of Nice adherents out there, you can feel free once again to blast us for pointing out the obvious degradation to the truth that such events result in, or you can finally wake up and man up, especially man up, and call out such actions yourselves. If a Catholic saw this image, and didn't immediately experience some guttural revulsion and great disturbance in his soul, then maybe it's time to take a few steps back and ask yourself just what you think the Catholic Church really is, because it ain't this. These men, by virtue of their office, call down Jesus Christ, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, from heaven and ordain other men to do the same. They are different by virtue of their office, and their pearls should not ca be cast before the swine of false ecumenism and fake tolerance and worldly praise. It's disgusting. Pray for all these shepherds, fellow Catholics, and pray for those coming up behind them, that they may be the instruments by which God at last relents of his punishment. As St. John Eudes so marvelously and insightfully points out, quote, the most evident mark of God's anger and the most terrible castigation he can inflict upon the world is manifest when he permits his people to fall into the hands of a clergy who are more in name than in deed, priests who practice the cruelty of ravening wolves rather than the charity and affection of devoted shepherds. They abandon the things of God to devote themselves to the things of the world. And in their saintly calling of holiness, they spend their time in profane and worldly pursuits. When God permits such things, it is a very positive proof that he is thoroughly angry with his people and is visiting his most dreadful wrath upon them. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.